Eastern signs of a high position in the society seem strange to us. For example, lotus legs broken in half, with which it was hardly possible to walk. Although in reality these are all phenomena completely analogous to the European aristocratic fashion, only the highest nobility could afford to wear tight corsets, huge dresses and wigs, emphasizing that they did not need to serve themselves, not to mention productive labor. In this video, there will be an interesting insight into the history and unusual finds of archaeologists. Hi friend, you are on the Curtop channel. The Damascus Scroll will explain the mysteries of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Scroll specialists have wondered for many years why such a huge number of mysterious manuscripts, more than 15,000 fragments related to 900 original documents, were hidden in caves near Qumran, in a place far from any settlements. Research by Daniel Weinstab reveals that Qumran hosted an annual ceremony for the mystical Jewish sect of the Essenes, which gathered members from cities and rural communities throughout Israel. A mysterious ritual known as the Covenant of Renewal was performed here every year. Daniel Weinstab theorized that the scrolls could have been created by scribes from various Essenes from all over Israel and brought to Qumran for study and storage. The scientists made such conclusion after studying the so-called Damascus document. The Damascus document, named for its many reference to a city in Syria, is a copy of an older Jewish source from around the 10th century AD. For a thousand years he lay in the Cairo Geniza in a storeroom adjacent to the Jewish synagogue. Destruction of any text containing the name of God is prohibited by Jewish religious law, even by accident. Therefore, any documents of the Jewish community of Cairo, just in case, were kept in Geniza. Ancient Egyptian Symbol Jad The Pillar of Jad was an object of worship in the pre-dynastic period given its name to the city of Jad. This is clearly a stylized image, but there was controversy as to the origin of the symbol. As a hieroglyph, it came to represent stability and longevity, but it may have started out as a fertility fetish. It is believed that the Jad was a wooden pole to which sheaves of grain were tied after harvest. Alternatively, the symbol could represent four pillars of increasing size, visible one after the other, and thus symbolize the four pillars that firmly carry the sky. Finally, Jack can represent the spine of a human or a supernatural humanoid being such as the god Osiris. However, many modern commentators see other possible interpretations. Some describe it as an electrical device with insulators, which others suggest that it was an energy generator. It has also been suggested that it is a remnant of an ancient cattle worshipping culture and represents the spine of a bull. During the ancient kingdom, Jet was associated with Ta, who was given the epithet Noble Jet. Remains of animals half a billion years old Paleontologists at the Royal Ontario Museum have discovered the remains of a large new fossil of an extinct group of animals in half a billion year old Cambrian rocks in Kootenay National Park in the Canadian Rockies. The results were announced on September 8, 2021, in a study published in the Royal Society Open Science. The species was named Titanochorus jayanesi and stands out for its size. With an estimated total length of a half a meter, Titanochorus was a giant compared to most of the animals that lived in the seas at that time, most of which were barely the size of a little finger. The sheer size of this animal is mind-boggling and is one of the largest Cambrian animals ever discovered. From an evolutionary point of view, Titanochorus belongs to a group of primitive amphipods called radiodons. The most iconic representative of this group is the Anomalochorus's predator, which may have itself reached a meter in length. Titanochorus is part of a subgroup of radiodons called the Hardiads, which have an incredibly long head covered with a three-part carapace that has taken countless forms. The ratio of head to body was such that it strongly resembled giant shrimp. Why some radiodons evolved into such an amazing variety of carapace shapes and sizes is still poorly understood. 6th century ivory crest during excavations in Bavaria, archaeologists unearthed valuable artifacts in two ornate 6th century burials, among which they highlight an ivory comb decorated with animal images and a red ceramic bowl made in what is now Tunisia. The crest was found in the burial of an adult man, whose age was 40-50 years. 
He was a warrior buried with a full array of weapons, including a long sword, spear, shield, and battle axe. In the pit next to the grave, archaeologists also found the skeletal remains of a horse and the presence of a pair of spurs and the remains of a bridle found inside the man's grave suggest that he was the owner of this horse. At the feet of the warrior was a bag made of organic material, but it is almost not preserved. A comb was found in it, as well as scissors, with the help of which a warrior could take care of his hair and beard. This ridge split over time, but restorers were able to restore it. Ridges are more common in later medieval burial contexts, but they were generally carved from horn or the bones of native animals. Ivory carvings of any kind were extremely rare in the 6th century, and the few surviving ivory ridges were simple or biblical. This ridge is quite different from those previously found. High-quality carvings depicted a scene of hunting animals that were not typical of Europe. Prey, similar to antelope, leaping from the pursuing predators. At the same time, it is explained that since there are no other similar examples, archaeologists could not determine exactly which animals are depicted on the ridge. Huji, precious snail cases. It is for this that the Chinese fashion for very long nails appeared and kept for several centuries. Even now, they say, among the new Chinese, you can find enough owners of long nails on the little finger. Thus, the owner of the nails signaled his wealth and the idle lifestyle. The fashion of the Chinese aristocracy for long nails originated in the Middle Ages, but became especially popular in the 18th-19th centuries. It was then that the noble Chinese began to grow especially outstanding nails up to 15 centimeters long, and previously they wore no more than a couple of centimeters, neatly trimmed and all the same lengths. Most often, super long nails were grown by women, although some men were also fond of growing them, but less often, usually stopping at medium length. And of course, having all the nails very long was completely uncomfortable, so they were left to grow two nails on each hand, on the little finger and on the ring finger. And in order, firstly to decorate oneself, and secondly to protect the treasures from breakdowns, they began to wear special jewelry cases, which were called Gigi Tao, or Huji, in translation, protection of fingers, nails. Huji were a decorated hard claw with a hole for a fingertip, made of precious metals, bone or shell, and decorated with stones, animal and feathers. Antique nail covers made 200 years ago are now collectibles, and most of the surviving huji are not so valuable in terms of materials, they are most often silver with semi-precious stones. And in general, there are a lot of them, and you can buy the marigold for quite a bit of money. The spread of knowledge 400,000 years ago Scientists believe that already 400,000 years ago, knowledge and skills were already spreading between different groups of people. Until now, it was believed that culture expansion began only 70,000 years ago, when modern humans, Homo sapiens, began to disperse. In the basis of their research, scientists took data on the use of fire by hominins, obtained from archaeological excavations in different places around the world. In many places, researchers have found similar traces of the treatment of objects with fire. In their opinion, it is unlikely that this similarity was due to the fact that the early predecessors of humans themselves traveled great distances or that they simultaneously developed certain methods separately from each other. Instruments made using the so-called level watt technique appear in a very short period of time in more and more places in the old world. There are also genetic traces that show that different populations of hominins must have been in contact with each other. The researchers considered not only the archaeological evidence of the spread of the use of the fire, but also what is needed to share such knowledge. It was important to find out how certain types of hominins could be in social contact with each other. Therefore, knowledge from anthropology, primatology and social sciences was integrated. Children's Toys of the Era of the Pharaohs the first children's toys in ancient Egypt date back to around the 3rd millennium BC. Toys were made from clay, alabaster, stone, wool, and flax. Most of the ancient toys are figurines of various animals, such as lions, mice, cows, dogs, cats, crocodiles, and they were made mainly of wood or cardboard, they were happily painted. Such toys in general had a primitive mechanism for the animation effect. For example, they moved on wheels, it was worth pulling the rope. Or, such toys opened their mouth. The ancient Egyptians also had dolls with hinges and even puppets. Toys were made from clay, stone, wool, and flax. 
board games were also common in ancient Egypt. So the children did not have to get bored, they always had something to do in between studying and helping their parents. And also, the kids in ancient Egypt had bowls. They were made mainly from papyrus, wood, or the skin of various animals. Often, these bowls were small and represented a small bowl with small stones inside. It is believed that these bowls served as a first rattle for young children. The video has come to an end and now you need to do a certain ritual. Subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, write a kind comment and of course, like it. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!